Good evening and welcome to this Wednesday night Compline service here at St. Paul's Bloor Street. My name is Ben and I'm very glad that you've come to join me as we take this time to pause and to uh, give God the past day or perhaps the past week um, to be able to do that in reflection and prayer. This is the last week of the year, so this is the last week of the church calendar year specifically as next week is Advent. Advent starts on J December 3rd, and so we have these four Sundays leading up to Christmas that are the uh, preparation, weeks of preparation as we prepare for Christ's coming and for we prepare for Christ's coming again. And so as some of you might be familiar with the Lent season before Easter, Advent has a similar purpose as we prepare, as we look forward with anticipation for Christ's coming, for Christ's coming again. So next week, we will have a different Advent uh, Compline service, which will be sung. It will be a collaboration between myself, Joshua Slater, our classic music director, and also with Miranda, our MAP intern. So look forward to that um, and joining with you in a different, slightly different format. Um, there will be obviously the PDFs and uh, um, materials for you to follow online. And for today, um, as this is the last week, we are still, still using this um, Advent Compline uh, sorry, the regular Compline um, service order that will be in the link in the description. And you're very welcome to join in and to follow along. And of course, you can follow along as you are comfortable. And you can also just listen along as I'll, I will um, say the, the responses um, on behalf of all of you watching as well. So now let's come in a time of preparation as we prepare uh, to approach God in prayer. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Let us reflect on the past day. Most merciful God, we confess to you before the whole company of heaven and one another, that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have failed to do. Forgive us our sins, heal us by your Spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. I invite you to listen or to sing along as we uh, have here the Foss Hill on. O gracious light, Lord Jesus Christ, in you the Father's glory shone. Immortal, holy, blessed is he, and blessed are you, his holy Son. Now sunset comes, but light shines forth. The lamps are lit to pierce the night. Praise Father, Son, and Spirit God, who dwells in the eternal light. Worthy are you of endless praise, O Son of God, life-giving Lord, wherefore you are through all the earth and in the highest heaven adored. The reading of our psalm today is taken um, following our daily office lectionary that we've been using for the past uh, few months. And this is uh, Psalm 118, verses 14 through to the end. So if you're following along in your book of alternative services, if you have a copy, um, this is on page 867. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. There is a sound of exaltation and victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely, 
but he did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness, I will enter them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord, he who is righteous may enter. I will give thanks to you, for you answered me, and have become my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our, sight, in our eyes. On this day the Lord has acted. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Hosanna, Lord, Hosanna. Lord, send us now success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. God is the Lord. He has shined upon us. Form a procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will thank you. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. And we close our psalm with the glory of Hatri. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Similarly, our reading for the scripture is taken from the daily office lectionary that's prepared for us by Tyler. And today we are reading from um, Romans 4. And that's Romans 4, verses 1 through 12. What then are we to say was gained by Abraham, our ancestor, according to the flesh? For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now to one who works, wages are not reckoned as a gift, but as something due. But to one who without works trusts him, who justifies the ungodly, such faith is reckoned as righteousness. So also David speaks of the blessedness of those to whom God reckons righteousness apart from works. Blessed are those whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the one against whom the Lord will not reckon sin. Is this blessedness then pronounced only on the circumcised or also on the uncircumcised. We say, faith was reckoned to Abraham as righteousness. How then was it reckoned to him? Was it before or after he had been circumcised? It was not after, but before he was circumcised. He received the sign of circumcision as a seal of the righteousness that by faith, that he had by faith, while he was still uncircumcised. The purpose was to make him the ancestor of all who believe without being circumcised and who thus have righteousness reckoned to them and likewise the ancestor of the circumcised who are not only circumcised but who also follow the example of the faith that our ancestor Abraham had before he was circumcised this is the word of the Lord thanks be to God One of my reflections um, that just come as I was reading this section of Romans 4 is this uh, contrast between uh, the faith of Abraham and the sign, the seal, that physical mark of circumcision that, um, that God asked and commanded him to, uh, to, to perform. And it is, in some ways, there are parallels to our understanding of baptism, how baptism is a sign of an internal uh, an internal faith and how that that works together an external sign and symbol and an internal reality and so some of you will have known um, that over this past Sunday um, that we uh, performed uh, quite a number of baptisms and actually that was um, my first opportunity to uh, baptize new Christians into God's family and it is very interesting has as there are often debates and we don't have the full time to discuss that here, um, but that there is an, a very interesting case of what does baptism mean for an infant who yet cannot profess faith? 
And yet we, as Anglicans, we would believe and we would understand sacraments, that is, these holy mysteries, as not my work, not the work of that person who is professing faith. Indeed, an infant cannot profess faith. They can't, they can't even speak. And yet it is, what is God doing? How is faith reckoned to Abraham? What is the faith that was placed upon him? What is the faith, the faithfulness? There are synonyms in Hebrew. Faith and faithfulness are synonyms. What is the faithfulness of God in this case when we are struggling with our own doubts, with our own questions? And where is that place where God is faithful to us and that we can rely on his faith, his faithfulness to us? And that we can uh, trust in his work, his character, when our character may be flawed, when we may, uh, we, when we may sin and turn away. We can rely and uh, trust in God. So it's just some reflections that just uh, line up between this reading and uh, the baptism that we had this past Sunday. So I do invite you, as you have perhaps, um, or if you have already been baptized, to reflect on what the, what that passage means in terms of that seal, the sign of baptism, how that sealed your faith. Maybe it was when it was very recently. Maybe it was when you were an infant. And if you have not yet been baptized, what does that mean in terms of um, what, where does, what does your faith mean and how could it be outwardly um, shown? How can it be sealed? Um, how can the inward reality be manifested um, physically, manifested in the physical world? So something for you to consider. Let us continue our... Uh, our service with a period of silent reflection. I'll give you some time. Um, if you like, you can pause for a bit just to consider um, the scripture. That's Romans 4, 1 to 12. Read it again. Um, and after some time, you can continue back with me. Now we continue with the responses. Into thy hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Into thy hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. For you have redeemed me, Lord God of truth. I commend my spirit. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me under the shadow of your wings. Let us say the Gospel Canticle. Save us, O Lord, while waking, and guard us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep may rest in peace. Now, Lord, you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the, in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Save us, O Lord, while waking, and guard us while sleeping, that asleep, awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep may rest in peace. As I have this Book of Common Prayer, um, our Book of Alternative Service, just ready for me here. Um, let us use together um, the, the second litany, and uh, the response is, Lord, hear our prayer. So this is litany number two on page 112 of the BAS. Let us pray with confidence to the Lord, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. O Lord, guard and direct your church in the way of unity, service, and praise. We pray especially for the, the new members of the, your church, the newly baptized, those who have professed their faith through the waters of baptism, those whom you claimed through the anointing of oil, through the washing of water. Lord, would you bring them fully into your family? Would you welcome them 
and would you give us, the rest of us who have been in your family for perhaps much longer, a sense of warmth and welcome to them as we celebrate with those who have uh, been added to the family of God. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. Give to all nations an awareness of the unity of the human family. We pray for places like the Sudan, for Yemen, for Ukraine, for Gaza, for Israel, for the West Bank. We pray for so many places where there has been generational violence, generational hatred, where the unity of the human family, the rifts of that have gone back so far and the unity seems almost impossible. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. Cleanse our hearts of prejudice and selfishness and inspire us to hunger and thirst for what is right. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach us to use your creation for your greater praise, that all may share the good things you provide. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. Strengthen all who give their energy or skill for the healing of those who are sick in body or in mind. We pray especially at this time for many who are falling ill from the flu, from colds, from COVID once again. We pray for those who are worried of uh, catching illness again, and for those whose families are affected, for children in the schools, for the elderly who are at home and perhaps in long-term care. We pray for all those who care for them, who tend for them, who desire the best of their health for them. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. Set free all who are bound by fear and despair. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. Grant a peaceful end and eternal rest to all who are dying and give your comfort to those who mourn. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. And we, con we conclude our prayers with the collect, the fourth one on the page. We pray, look down, O God, from your heavenly throne. Illuminate the darkness of this night with your, your celestial brightness. And from the children of light, banish the deeds of darkness. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. We pray as Jesus taught his friends and his followers. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. In peace we will lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make us dwell in safety. Abide with us, Lord Jesus. For the night is at hand, and the day is now past. As the night watch looks for the morning, so do we look for you, O Christ. And tonight, take this blessing with you. The Lord bless us and watch over us. The Lord make his face shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord look kindly on us and give us peace. Amen. Once again, thank you for joining for this Wednesday Night Compline. I did not mention uh, where where I am. I, I noticed that sometimes I've, I've done that in the previous weeks. I am in a different office. This is my regular office at the church, and uh, I'm using a slightly different setup. So if, if the sound sounds a little bit different and the angles look a little bit odd, um, 
the regular setup was not available, so this is what I had. And um, and some of you will know that uh, this is recorded on a not on Wednesday night because uh, it is by the time Wednesday night comes around, it has already gone live. Um, so this is actually a Monday night, and uh, and oftentimes uh, when I'm in the office on a Monday night, it is for ESL Cafe. So. Um, I do invite your prayers for our ESL Cafe ministry, which is bursting at the seams. And uh, if you have um, an interest to help out with it, I would very welcome having you along. Um, you can always just drop in and visit on a Monday night, uh, anytime from 7 onwards. Um, and we have a pretty full uh, complement of students and a full roster of volunteers, but we can always use some new help. So. Um, Hence why you're finding me here at the church on a, on, a, on an evening, but uh, do welcome you to um, come and check it out. And of course, as we come into the Advent season, I do commend uh, you joining with us as we have our Advent song Compline. Um, it'll be easy enough for you to sing along, but it is also a, a way for you to um, meditate on it and just to listen and enjoy um, the the, the, the singing of, uh, of Joshua, myself, and Miranda as we um, carry the prayers of all the people together. So for this night, I just uh, bid you adieu, and I look forward to seeing you the next time we're around. Again, we'll be in different environs, and uh, you'll, you'll get to see different parts of the church. Um, we'll be coming from St. George Chapel. So not St. George the Church, where we had the church plant, but St. George Chapel, it's a, one of our small chapels in the church that are a little bit hidden away, um, and some of you might not recognize it, but I hope that you will uh, still join us and you'll enjoy um, being in a different uh, space, and perhaps that will um, help you along in your Advent prayers and your, um, in your Advent preparation. Thanks again, and I uh, look forward to seeing some of you in other places, and uh, see you next time we join together on, uh, on this YouTube online Compline service. See you again. Bye now.